Diane, Tom, Beast Brother, Janet, Diane, Tiffany, Jana, woohoo, how's it going? Thank you so much for coming on my tour tonight. It's an invisible tour. Storm, Bruce, from the Scottish Borders, hello, how's it going, my chief? Artemis, how you doing, buddy? Philippa, Adrian, woohoo! Lorraine, how's it going? Lexi, Emily, Lee, Grit, Gooden, na- Gooden Nabin, no, Gooden, what's it, Good Nacht, Teresa, Chris, Janet, hello, Anna Maria, Anne, welcome to Oban. <laughs> Can't actually see much. A storm has blown in. Oh, what's happened there? One second, everyone, my umbrella's just collapsed. I've been having not much luck before this tour started, everyone. Uh, the st- a storm broke out. My app, the two of my apps that I need t- to do this, logged me out at the same time. <laughs> so, hello. Welcome to Oban. Look at this. It was beautiful a minute ago. Oh, I'm getting soaked here. Look at this. A big storm blew in, just a little while ago. You could actually see everything, about 10 minutes ago you could actually see everything. And then this happened. (laughs) I've got my umbrella. I'm trying to protect my... I can't even get closer because I'm standing in a big massive puddle. One second everyone. I just need to move, there's big puddles in my way. But look at this. This is the beautiful horse-shaped bay of Oban, the seafood capital of the whole of Scotland. How's everyone doing, by the way? If you can type a chat in the box. Marsha, grit, it's a beautiful view. It's lovely here. Diana, from Pennsylvania. Hello. How are you, Diane? Laura. Welcome to Scotland. Thank you very much for coming on my tour. A big massive storm has came in and hidden away all my views. <laughs> Lexi, how are you doing, Paul? I'm doing not too bad. I've just had dinner. I've just had fish and chips. And a big storm broke out before we went for dinner. It was a lovely clear day today. And then all of a sudden this big storm blew in and blown us all this miserable weather but I've got a good signal for the phone can you hear and see me okay I've got a good signal here for some reason Gail hello Gail I think the view's nice eh, the view <laughs> the view I think the signal should be full strength actually because um, I've got full bars which is quite unusual for up here I'm right at the top of Oban. I'm right next to a replica of the Colosseum here. Look, I'll see if I can show you. I thought it would be lit up at night from honour of Her Majesty the Queen. But no. One second. Ooh. You can see it. This is supposed to be a replica of the Colosseum. It didn't turn out that way. <laughs> Jolene! Hey, thank you very much for coming on my tour tonight. Frederick. Hello, my friend. Where are you from? I'll tell you about this tower as we get started. It's supposed to be a replica of the Colosseum in uh, Roma. Has anyone been to the Colosseum? I have. I went to Roma once. Beautiful city. Not very clean, right enough. But we've not got much of a view, unfortunately. Tom. Is that Tom from Krakow in Poland? Tom the tour guide. Tom's a great tour guide, everyone. If you haven't been on Tom's tours. Salman. Oh, it's not Tom. Tom K from Ohio. Ohio. Natalie. Um, to, to, um, she was there in 1999, buddy. Ohio, Ohio. <laughs> Andrew, how's it going, my friend? 
Lisa. Buenas tardes. Tom from Idaho. Julian is on a break from work. Well, bug out prickly too. Yes, I've just, I've got, I've got one hour. Well, I've got the rest of the evening to myself tonight. I've just been for dinner with my group. We did have a really nice view about 20 minutes ago. We had a big storm blew in. Linda. Oh, we've got a couple from Ohio. I've got a group of Americans with me today. They're mostly from Houston and Texas. They're all cowboys, man. Hell yeah. Woohoo. Welcome to Oban. Don. Hey, Don. How's life, Don? Who else just joined in? I missed that. Wendy from Canada. Elizabeth is from Chicago. The Windy City, huh? Hello, Ayla. I missed you, Paul. Ah, oh, thank you, Ayla. Yeah, I'll need to put up some more tours. I've not actually got any more tours on for another week. I'll need to put some more tours up on um, for this week. I'll put a tour up from Ballater, actually. We're going to visit the Royal Village, which is next to Balmoral. I'm going there in a couple of days, so I'll put a tour up for Ballater. And Aberdeen as well. I'll put a tour up. I just looked at my calendar. I haven't got any tours booked for a week. So I'll need to put up some um, tours. And it looks lovely. It was looking even lovelier earlier. Cormac. Hannah. Mary Ann. You can see the main ferry there. See the main ferry down here. It's still raining, by the way. So you can see the big boat. There. That's the main ferry terminal. Open as the gateway to the islands as well as being the seafood capital of Scotland. Emily from west of Chicago, Illinois. Matthew from Arizona. Hannah. It is stunning, but believe it or not, it was even more stunning earlier. <laughs> the joys of being in Scotland. John. W. Hello, John. I don't think I've seen you do a night tour. Yeah, I've done them. I've done a few. I'm going to start doing more. You get more followers if you do it at night. So I'm going to do. Um, I'm going to start doing more tours because you get more followers if you do it in the evening time because it's opening up a whole new audience to the Americans. TP, hey buddy. Ian, oh, hello, my friend. How's it going? Freedom. Beatrice, hello, Beatrice. That's a very royal name you've got here. Are you a princess? Is that the princess's name? Is it Princess Beatrice? Or am I getting confused? Julie! I'm sure there's a princess beginning with B. Maureen! Hello! Beatrice is. Oh, I stand corrected. I'm on lunch. <laughs> so I'm taking it. It's lunchtime where you are. Lorraine, yes. Ah, it is Beatrice. Eh? Beatrice and Eugenie or something. They look like a couple of horses. Beatrice. I'm in New Jersey. Andrew's daughter, yes. Denise, Noreen, Carol Sue, Kevin. Woohoo! Oh, I've got three minutes to go, everyone. You need to keep me right. <laughs> Lorraine. <laughs> I'm the only idiot out, by the way. Who's the only idiot that came out in a storm? Me. <laughs> There's no one else here. I'm the only one alive. There's been a zombie apocalypse. Apocalypse. Oban has been taken over, and I'm the only one left alive. Can you help me get out of here? <laughs> Ruiza, SK. Welcome to the Bay of Oban. Can't see too much because a big storm blew in. And disappeared our view, so it did. Colleen! Hey, Colleen! He goes for zombie apocalypse tour. <laughs> I'm still working on my murder mystery tour. If you can see follow on the screen, by the way, can you follow my channel? If you are not already following my channel, can you please place follow? And that is one way you can help to support the tour guides here. See a little fishing boat going out. See the wee boat going out. Rosie, 
my favourite wine. Hello. Hello, Rosie R. Beatrice, I loved Oban when I visited a while back. It's a lovely, it's my favourite place on my tour, actually. Bruce, thank you for following me. Artemis, we will have a good signal. Yeah, I can't understand how I've got a full signal tonight. I've struggled with my signal here before. Is wee fishing boat going out to catch the lobsters and oysters for tomorrow's lunch? That would be a great for a Halloween, for a zombie tour. <laughs> be quite funny, wouldn't it? Hey, Rosie, my friend. How's life? Wapoo! Woohoo! Janice! Tariq! Hey, buddy! How's it going, my good friend? Welcome to the Bay of Oban. It means Little Bay. Beautiful, isn't it? Louisa. I went to Oban 43 years ago. Wow. Probably not much has changed, actually. To be honest. A couple of more developments. Camilio! Linda! Woo! I was there in 2006. It's a nice place. Cannot miss this tour as the bear's favourite food is fish. We're not going to see too much fish tonight because a big storm blew in and blew away all my nice views. Julie! From the Scottish Highlands. Hey, Julie! Welcome to Oban. Where are you going? I've got a, in fact, I'll need to put on a tour from Culloden. I'm going to Culloden soon. I'll need to put, I've not got any tours up this week, actually. I'll need to put up some tours. Julie is our tour guide. She's had no luck recently. Julie, everyone, everyone. so if, if you can follow Julie, Julie's channel and give her your support, please. She's had a pretty miserable year this year. Oh, the tour's about to start. Renata! Woohoo! Here we go, one second everyone. Hello everyone who's joining. Oh. Oh. Welcome. Welcome to the Pleasure Dome. Hello everybody. I look quite scary, don't I, in the dark? <laughs> How's everyone doing, by the way? My name is Paul and I'm going to be your tour guide tonight. Tonight I'm in the seafood capital of Scotland. <laughs> yeah, some ghost stories. And um, is there anyone here for the very first time? Hello, everyone who's joining. Do we have any Hegel virgins tonight? If you have not followed my channel, you'll see somewhere on the screen. Follow. Please follow my channel. It helps support the tour guides. And also in the middle of the screen at the bottom is a big round white button. Yeah, can you see a round white button? And that is for taking what we call postcards. We won't have too many opportunities tonight because, as you can see, it's blinking dark. Does anyone have any children watching? Is there any children watching? Sheila, Salman, hello everyone, Joanna. Janet, it's my first time from Camden, Maine. Okay. Been a bin. Been a bin. No. Anyone have a tour there? No. Hello everyone who's joining. Thank you so much for joining my tour tonight. We're just overlooking the little Oban, the Bay of Oban. It's a small town. It's not actually in the highlands of Scotland. It's just down from the border of the highlands, actually. Scotland is split into three main areas. The lowlands of Scotland, the central belt, which is where Glasgow and Edinburgh is, and then we move up north to the highlands. So it's three main areas. Well, the highlands and islands, actually. Tess, Claudia, Joy, Andrew, welcome. Sorry if I've missed anybody. Yes, yeah, so it's only a very small town. The population is between eight and 10,000. But during the summer season, it's a very, um, it's a great tourist destination is Oban. And during the height of the summer season, the population can actually treble to as much as 25,000 people in Oban. It's a beautiful little town. If you do visit Scotland at any point, I highly recommend Oban because, oh, it might have stopped raining, maybe. See over here? Can you see where I'm pointing the camera right now? Is That is the main pier. That's the pier area. And down there are lots of seafood shacks. One of the best seafood shacks in the whole of Europe is down there. And that is also the main ferry terminal. 
Oban is known as the seafood capital of Scotland, and it is also the gateway to the islands, believe it or not. The gateway to the islands, because this is one of the main islands in uh, the mainland, and it services all the islands. So a lot of the islanders come over to Oban. Some come to school here, and some come over here just to do their shopping and things like that, and go to the hospital. So there's lots of ferries leave from here. You go across to Mull and Iona. The island of Mull is over there. <laughs> Unfortunately, we can't see the island of Mull. Um, and that leads across to the island of Iona. And that is the birthplace of Christianity. Hello, everyone who's joining. Um, yes, I am here with a tour group. If you see here directly in where these lights are here, Melissa. Woohoo! Thank you very much for joining my tour tonight. And the Reverend Deed, thank you so much for joining me again. So just here, past here, is my hotel. I'm staying in the Oban Bay Hotel. And it's got beautiful views over the Bay of Oban. And Oban means small place, or small bay. The fish and chips are fantastic here. I have had fish and chips for my dinner tonight. And there are several fish and chip shops here in Oban. And seafood restaurants galore as well. So if you like seafood and you're coming to Scotland, I highly recommend spending at least two days here. I wouldn't recommend coming here for just a day trip. I would come here for at least two days, possibly three, four days. Maybe get yourself a trip across to the Isle of Mull, to Iona. Does anyone know a, a kid's TV programme? What's the story in Balamori, wouldn't you like to know? What's the story in Balamori, wouldn't you like to know? Well, that's on the Isle of Mull. Great whiskey here as well. Yes, the open, you can actually, oh no, you can't see, the open whiskey distillery is just down here. <laughs> and the, the whiskey distillery actually predates the village. It's an early 18th century distillery. And the, basically the, the town grew up around the distillery, actually. And um, Claudia, I stayed in the manor house for my wedding holiday. Oh, I've not been there, I don't think. We've I've stayed in a few hotels here. They're all quite old-fashioned, to actually. It, the, the, you don't come up to the Highlands and Islands looking for modern, um, you know, like, hotels. The hotels, it's like stepping back into time, into the 1970s. Some of them are like 1970s retirement homes. Quite old-fashioned up here, but a lot of American tourists love it. There are quite a lot of American tourists come up here. Janet was there in 17, but my companions did not want to go to Iona. Of course, Iona is the birthplace of Christianity here in Scotland. When St Columba came over in the 6th century to convert the Picts, the painted people, to Christianity. There is a Premier Inn, yeah, there is a Premier There's always a Premier Inn. To be honest, there's always a Premier Inn, as um, Bruce is saying. Which is obviously kind of modern, but it's not really... It's kind of budget, Premier Inn. It's like, or maybe just above budget hotel. But yeah, nobody comes to the Oban for like all mod cons, you know. It's like, I think some hotels could do with being upgraded a little bit, to be honest. Hello Anita and Dee and everyone who's joining. So we're just going to go down for a walk into Oban Bay. Thank you very much for joining my tour. Below budget. <laughs> so I'm actually, we're actually standing outside the replica of the Coliseum, which I thought would be lit up tonight. You can't actually see it very well from here, but we'll go. In fact, I need to get a torch, actually. I should have brought a torch with me. I'm going to be standing in puddles and all that. One second, everyone. If I go a bit slow, if you hear me going, ah, <laughs> you'll know something's up. <laughs> I can't see a thing. It's lovely view. Sandy. Hello, Sandy. Thank you very much. We're just going to get rid of this view. The last time we'll see it, everyone. I'm going, we're going to go down for a little walk into Oban Bay. Yes, Claudia, I'm going to do that right now. Once we get a view of it. <laughs> Once I can actually see it. I can't actually see where I'm going, to be honest. It was actually quite light and bright earlier on. Look at this. Oh, the signal's gone and everything. Ah, oh, right, here we go. Hopefully this big signal's dropped. Whoa, I can't actually see where I'm going. Hang on, I'm going to have to get a torch. Can you still hear and see me okay? The signal's dropped down, so I'm hoping it's just because we're inside the Coliseum here. Bam, 
bum, bum. So we're bearing with everyone. I'm just trying to find my way out. It's just a bit dark. <laughs> can't see me. I can't see either. I just know where I'm going because I'm coming to some steps. <laughs> and I'll turn left in a minute. Bear with me, everyone. <laughs> there is a tour guide here. I'm just about out of the... Aye, right. sound pal. No, no, I just can't see. <laughs> no, no, I'm live. <laughs> Aye, well, that was last week. <laughs> I'm going to try and get my torch on my other phone. One second, everyone. Bear with me, I've got another phone here. I might have a torch on it. <laughs> oh, no, it's in my bag. Yeah, talk amongst yourselves, everyone. <laughs> I've got, I've got a torch, it's in my other bag. Look at this. My watch. I can see my watch. Well, I've never lost my umbrella. I'm trying to multi, there's no street lights or nothing here. One second, everyone. There was, there was a guy up thinking I was talking to myself. I'm thinking to myself, what's this guy doing here? There's somebody else on the fruitcake like me. I can't see five steps in front of me. I can hardly see three steps. One second, I'll get a bit lighter in a minute. <laughs> oh, gee whiz. There we go, I can see where I'm going a bit now. I've got a set of steps coming up somewhere, hopefully. One second, everyone. Ah, here we go, I can see the steps. There we go, look at this, I can see light now. I can see civilization. <laughs> look, that's a good photograph actually. Take a postcard, look. It's a nice silhouette there. <laughs> the signal's back now, can you see me now? I'm just I've got some steps coming up, I'm just trying to watch out for the steps, everyone. If you see me going flying, you'll know it's me going falling down the steps. <laughs> hey look, look. Why there's no lights? Well, the council can't afford to light the place anymore. The council can't afford, and a, and a, and a, a rich Scotland. In a, a bankrupt Scotland by Nicola Sturgeon. Aye, we're richer than France. <laughs> so here we are, everyone. This is the highlight of the tour. We've come to a car park in Oban Bay. Isn't it wonderful here? <laughs> Look, we can't even see the tower actually. I'm surprised it's not lit up at night. You'd think it'd be lit up at night. I mean, what kind of cheapskates are they in the Highlands? <laughs> yeah, that guy was getting a bit involved. Who's he? <laughs> Look, you can't even see it. The electricity, ah, yeah, no, I think he's been on the, I think he's been on the jungle juice. Look, you can't even see it. No, you can't even see it at all. I'll see if I can get a picture down the way. And I'll tell you a little bit about it. <laughs> I'll just try and get back down the road now without getting assaulted. When I was doing this tour in Aberdeen a couple of weeks ago, about, I got accosted by about three different groups of people trying to assault me. <laughs> Up here, they're not used to seeing people with gimbals and talking to themselves. Mind you, they're like that everywhere, to be honest. <laughs> yeah, I think he's been on the magic mushrooms. They're on the magic mushrooms and LSD and hallucinogenics up this way, remember, eh? They're all half fruitcakes, man. There's actually some beautiful houses down here, I was hoping to show you them, but it's not looking like we're, uh... <laughs> Look at this. Is this my favourite garden here? Look. You never know what's going to happen live. Look at this, everyone. Have you practised taking your postcards yet? I've got over half a million postcards now. <coughs> Come on. Yeah, it's, um, as I say, I thought it'd be a bit lighter than this, but, no, I mean, the good thing about open is, 
Once you climb up to the tower, Lorna from London, hello, Adrian. With the price of lecky these days, can you blame them for keeping the lights off? Yes, I don't know if you know everyone. Electricity in Britain has went up 200, over 200%, despite Scotland being one of the most energy-rich countries in the whole of Europe. There's another beautiful house here, this lovely little cottage here. I'm so jealous of the houses up here. You get a lot more for your money up in the, the north of Scotland. How much, where were you when the a pile? I was up at a place called McCaig's Tower, or McCaig's Folly. I'm going to try and show you a better view of it. If I can get somewhere with a view, if I can turn around and get it, I'll get you a view. But yeah, it was built by a, a local guy um, who decided to build a replica of the Colosseum to employ local stonemasons in the winter. And they had grand plans to make it three stories high, it was going to be an art, art museum, a gallery, and so on. It was a replica of the Colosseum. However, like a lot of Scottish projects in the past, the guy died, and the project never came to fruition, unfortunately. But yeah, the houses, accommodation is a big problem up here, to be honest. In the north and the highlands of Scotland. Uh, Karen, Aline, hello everyone. Gregory. Yeah, accommodation is a massive problem in the north of Scotland and the Highlands and Islands. We get a lot of second home owners. Oh, that guy was an ignorant pig, isn't he? Did you hear him burping back there, man? What a cretin. He's one of these people who believe Scotland are too poor to be independent. Did you hear him saying Scotland's bankrupt because of Nicola Sturgeon? She's the First Minister. What he doesn't realise is he's been lied to his whole life. Scotland is one of the richest countries in the entire world. We've got a higher GDP than France. So if Scotland is too poor, France is too poor to be independent. Absolute twat. Don't get me started, man. Look at this quirky house, by the way. This is an artist's house. Some people have been brainwashed their whole lives to believe Scotland's too poor to be independent. It's because they were lied to their whole lives. The oil was discovered in 1974. Scotland became the only country in the world to discover oil and gas and become a poorer country. We've got over 33% of people living in fuel poverty. We've got most of the oil and gas in the whole of Europe. Scotland is richer than England, of course it is. Do you know how much whiskey we've got in storage? Scotland has got more whiskey in storage than England has got gold. Salmon and whiskey are 25% of all Britain's exports. Scotland is 8.2% of the population, but we have 33% of the resources of the UK. 33%. Yes, she's an artist. It's lovely, you can't see it. But she's got, like, the guy's buried his wife in the garden. <laughs> you can't see it. Devastated. As I say, it was quite bright just before the tour started. It was quite bright and light. And then a storm blew in, and everything got dark. Why do you think, when you think about it, people think England subsidised Scotland, right? The Conservative government will not subsidise a bedroom, never mind a country. If there is anyone out there who believes the Conservative government are subsidising Scotland, I have a bridge to sell you. And it's a great bridge. It's called the Bridge of Doom. <laughs> and it crosses from Aberdeen to Dundee. It's almost like Brig Doom. We call Aberdeen Aberdoom. It's one of the most godforsaken, miserable places in the whole of Scotland. <laughs> I'm in one of the moods now. Yeah, that guy's pissed me off. Um, would you like to live in an independent country? I wish I was living in an independent country called Scotland, the second oldest country in the whole of Europe. Does anyone know the oldest country in Europe? There's a question for you. Without using Google, do not use Google. Have a guess to which is the oldest country in the whole of Europe. I will give you a clue. Scotland is the second oldest country in the whole of Europe. Not Denmark? No. England. Away and boil your heat. Scotland's older than England by 100 years. <laughs> nope, it's not Italy or Ireland. 
Iceland, no. France, no. Wales, Greece, no. Greece is actually a very modern country. Believe it or not, Greece is actually a very young country. Egypt, no. Luxembourg, Netherlands, no. Netherlands is a very new country as well. Eh, no, Rome's not a country, that's a state. You're not very good at this, by the way. How come I'm much more educated than all of you people when I only went to school for two years? <laughs> I'm only kidding. Bulgaria. <laughs> I'll tell you, I'll put you in your misery, everyone. The oldest country in Europe, it's not Adrian. Scotland is the second oldest country, so it can't be Denmark. The oldest country is San Marino. San Marino is the oldest country in Europe. And Scotland is the second oldest country. It's a clash between Scotland and Denmark who has the oldest flag. San Marino, Frederick, look. You got it right. I thought San Marino was a principality of Italy. Believe it or not, this is the best ice cream shop. And open, by the way. You see it there? It's called the Pokey Hat. That's what we call a cone. But I'm just going to... I'm just going to oh, show you the open distillery a second. So you see here, so we still can't see the McCaig's Tower or McCaig's Folly. This is the distillery here. Andrew, thank you very much for leaving the tip. We only hear from San Marino at the Eurovision. <laughs> it's true. I thought it was the Principality of Italy because I thought Scotland was the oldest country. Um, but no, it's San Marino. So there is some people, a lot of people say Denmark. Now there is, um, Denmark and Scotland both claim to have the oldest flag in Europe. Okay, that's where the confusion is with Denmark. There is a big massive fight between Scotland and Denmark between who has got the oldest flag in Europe. And some people say Denmark and some people say Scotland. But do you know what it's got to do with? Who has, which flag has been in use the longest, really continually used? And therefore Scotland is the oldest flag in Europe. So anyone from Denmark wants a fight, come ahead. I'm living in Oban Bay Hotel, room number 62. <laughs> Polly and Tom, well thank you for leaving a trip. Yes, some of you will not know me by the way. Some of you, because I do not do tours very often in the, night, in the night time. Please do not take anything I say too seriously. I've got a habit of talking nonsense. I like to be controversial. And sometimes I talk absolute crap for Scotland. I get paid to speak crap for Scotland, to be honest. <laughs> Isn't that a great job? I get paid to speak nonsense about Scotland. <laughs> Lisa, and I love someone knocking, do you think I was daft enough to give my own room number? <laughs> That's a guy from Texas who I don't like. <laughs> He's six foot three. Good luck taking him on. He's got guns and everything. Alex, thank you for following me. Was there a big or rather small hole? <laughs> Shit faced. <laughs> Would you like Scotland to be in Europe? Yes. Look here, this is the this is the best pub in the whole of Britain for beer. This just won a big award, this pub. Look how old it is, everyone. 1790. The opening. It just won the best award. Is it camera? You know camera? The real ill people? Do I have a look inside the door? Let's have a look inside the pub. Come on, let me some live music on. Let's go for a little walk. Carla Ness. I think we are funny. I try to be funny. People say it's the best way to get a girlfriend is to make her laugh. Can I just say, I have been single for three years. <laughs> Look. One second, I'm just going to put my umbrella away. Look. Oh, the barmaid's quite nice. Maybe get a number. <laughs> One second, everyone. I'm just going to try and put my umbrella away. It might have stopped raining, I don't know. How long was I married? Not very long. 
Oh, uh, look, no line. Where's it going? Anyone want the Wi Fi password? <laughs> Open 1790. <laughs> Let's hack into there. So, this is quite a nice wee pub, this one's here. Maybe the barmaid will wave at me. Hello! <laughs> yeah, I got a wave from the barmaid. She fancies me. Look, wonder if I've got a click, everyone. <laughs> Let's go. Yeah, they think I've got two heads up here. Do you like the Irish ladies? Oh, yes. My favourite accent is Irish. I am I am half English, half Irish, and quarter... Eh, sorry, I am half English, half Scottish, and quarter Irish. I know I'm not very good at maths either. <laughs> <coughs> yes, I'm looking for a, um, an Irish partner. That, as long as you can cook decent curries... Can you, go, can you cook decent curries, buddy? Oh. Uh, one is Australian. I could tell you something really dirty about an Australian girl I met once. But it's probably too graphic even for me. <laughs> what about an American? Oh, yes, I love an American. Oh, yes. I, in fact, I'm not fussy. <laughs> I've been single for three years, you know what I mean? There was a scene in train spotting. <laughs> Has anyone got any children watching? Has anyone got any children watching? Because I'm going to say something rude. No. No. Okay, has anyone seen a movie called Train Spotting? Train Spotting features a guy called Spud. He's a heroin addict, right? And he's got a girlfriend. There's a scene in Train Spotting um, when Spud gets a new girlfriend, right? And she, she doesn't have sex with him for a, a long time, right? And they're at a nightclub one time. And uh, Spud says to his friend, Oh, she's not, had, she's not let me have sex for about six weeks. He says, he says my balls are as big as watermelons, man. <laughs> so this is a beautiful bay of Oban. Isn't it lovely? Lots of fish and chips. In fact, this is a nice fish and chip shop here. Look here. It means small bay. It's part, it's part um, Scots and part Norse. So that's Gaelic. Scotland speaks three languages. Scots. English. Some of us not very good at English. And Gaelic. Only about 2% of Scotland speaks Gaelic. Because of the Highland Clearances and the Jacobite Rebellion failure. But everyone on this website says, knows at least one Gaelic word. Can anyone guess what that Gaelic word is that everyone on this website here will know? I'll put you out of misery. Smashing! Smashing! You know the word smashing? Watermelons, yes, water. I have balls the size of watermelons, he said. Smashing! Yay! <laughs> I'm seeing nothing because I get myself into trouble sometimes, you know. That's why I'm doing sponsor-only tours. Some of you might not know, but I do sponsor-only tours. And I like to... Scottish people like to swear every third words. Okay, we are a nation that swear all the time. And doing the Hago tours, it's quite difficult to swear and use too much graphic adult content. So if you sponsor me, you'll get exclusive access to adult-only tours. Yes, Sandy, um, there's an app called Duolingo. Do you know the app called Duolingo? You can watch Gaelic on that. Uh, learn Gaelic, on sorry, on that. So there is the McCaig's Tower. See it? So there is McCaig's Tower. That's where I was. That's where I started the tour. And you look how it's, it looks like a replica of the Colosseum, doesn't it? As I say, it was supposed to be a replica of the Colosseum. It was supposed to be another story high. And it was John McCaig, a local stonemason. Uh, he owned a company and he wanted to employ stonemasons. So he came up with this grand vision to build a replica of the Colosseum here in Oban. It's called McCaig's Folly. I'm not back in Edinburgh until the 19th of September. And guess what happens on the 19th of September? 
It's the Queen's funeral. We are supposed to go to Edinburgh Castle to do a tour. And Edinburgh Castle has announced it is closed on the 19th of September. My American clients are devastated. So we're trying to come up with an alternative for them. Yeah, the sponsorship is, uh, it's, I think it's about £10 a month. And you get exclusive access to sponsor-only tours. Um, I send you a link to watch any tour you might have missed in the past. You know, if you've missed a tour, I can send you a link to my YouTube channel, which means you can watch it. So there's my cake. So that's where I started the tour. I hoped it would be lit up for, <laughs> for tonight's tour. But due to the increase in the price of electricity, unfortunately we could not see it. <laughs> Does the link include after hours tours? Um, yeah, well, basically if I give you a link to my YouTube channel, you can watch any channel, any video on the YouTube channel. There's tours up there with myself and Natalie. Natalie came to Edinburgh once from London, so there's a repeat of a tour up there. So just go to my YouTube channel and press subscribe. If somebody could put a link up to my YouTube channel, and if you watch any of my videos, please like and subscribe them. And please follow my channel. And look, there's another, this is a shack as well, see it? The Fish Box Taco Bay. So again, this has got excellent fish and chips here. I've never been to this one. But I've been assured that, um, look how busy it is. Look, I'm just going to watch where I'm going here. It gets that busy. You won't get a signal. Have I met Ian? Which Ian? Ian from um, Birmingham. I've only met him in virtually. So it gets that busy. People queue along the, the road here. I'm just going to show you this. So St. Columba is famous in this area. St. Columba, as I mentioned, came to uh, Scotland in the 6th century to create the people who lived here to Christianity. And he travelled about quite a lot. He was the first person to repel Nessie. Have you heard of Nessie, the Loch Ness monster? In fact, I might do a tour actually from Loch Ness. I'm going on a Loch Ness cruise in a few days. Would you like to see a cruise of Loch Ness, everyone? And we can go and spot Nessie, the Loch Ness monster. Yeah, I think I'll do that, actually. I think I'll put a cruise up. Watch out! If you follow my channel, everyone, if you can follow my Hegel channel, and, um, that's a good way. Oh, thank you, Karen. And we'll go Nessie spotting on Loch Ness. Okay, watch out for my channel. Follow my channel, and I'll put a couple of more tours up. I'm going to put a tour up of the Royal Village of Barata, which is just next to Balmoral. The Queen left Balmoral today for the last time. She went on a lovely tour of Scotland. I think she came to Scotland to die. I think ever since Philip died, the, the Queen gave up and she knew she was dying. And so she came to Scotland to her favourite place of Balmoral and I believe she came to Scotland to die. She did love Scotland. It was her happiest place in Balmoral. I'll give the Queen credit. I'm not a monarchist. I did not feel any grief at all when the Queen died. I was more upset when Robin Williams died, you know, the American comedian. When Robin Williams died, I was severely affected by that. And also, um, George Michael from Wham. You know George Michael from Wham? I was really badly affected by his death. I was never a Wham fan, to be fair, but I think because I grew up listening to all his music, George Michael, that really affected me. David Bowie's death did not affect me. It affected a lot of my friends. But Robin Williams was a, one of the most amazing human beings ever to have lived. He used to employ homeless people on every movie. He was a hilarious man. He filmed a couple of movies in Scotland. And Fort William, being human as well. Um, why did I call it Purple Paul? I used to get called Purple Paul because in 2004, I launched Scotland's first cannabis cafe called the Purple Haze Cafe. And my friends gave me a nickname, Purple Paul. <laughs> so it kind of stuck so I, I am now called Purple Paul so if you want to Google me you can go on Google and Google Purple Haze Cafe Leith, Edinburgh my hometown is Leith L-E-I-T-H there's a ferry coming in see the boat coming in so if you go on Google and Google 
Purple Haze Cafe, Paul Stewart, and then you'll find out all about my past. I have a warrant out for my arrest in three countries. I have a warrant out, out for my arrest in Scotland, England, and Gibraltar. I can never return to Gibraltar ever again in my life. But to be honest, that is no great loss because I do not like Gibraltar. <laughs> Thank you, Lorraine. Facebook, and, oh, I'll tell you what, I'm glad there's no smell of vision here. There's smelling of sewage or something. Ugh. What a horrible smell. Did I own a coffee shop? Yes. Uh, called the Purple Haze Cafe. I believe all drugs should be legalised. Look at this, look at on base. It's a tiny little town. As I say, there's only 8,000 people here. And there's lots of different ferries come in from the islands. There's one coming in just now. This might be the last ferry from Mull actually coming in just now. I think it should be a tourist attraction. Sandy, you said you only do sponsorship. Why have you? Uh, no, or for the adult content. Well, I want to do adult only tours. And I think the best way to do that is via sponsorship. Because anyone who does sponsor me knows that there will be graphic adult content. I've seen at least three tips. Ah, oh, yeah, this is a tip based platform. If you don't know, this is a tip based platform, everyone. So if you like the tour guide, if you like my irreverent nonsense chat, you can leave a tip. Some people have already done so. If you cannot afford to leave a tip, one way you can help us is by leaving a five star review. Um, you can follow my channel and you can add me as a friend on Facebook, Paul James Stewart. I'm taking lots of postcards and sharing them on um, Facebook Voyagers are a nice way to help us as well. Oh, yeah. Thank you very much, everyone. Much appreciated. Now that you're sponsored, Paul, you must have more money. No, because what happens is the tips tend to go down a little bit. But we don't know. This is the first month of trying it. It's only a brand new thing. But he go take 40% commission as well. So I don't think... Um, I've only got 17, I've got 17 sponsors now. I'm looking for three people to sponsor me, by the way. I'm trying to get up to 20 people. So if you do want to sponsor me, now's a great time to do so. You get a big announcement on uh, in the chat as well, for some reason. And, uh, and that gives me the confidence to put on some slightly adult-themed tours. Thank you, Margaret. Chang, hey, Chang. I can put up this tour for you, Chang. You've joined quite close to the end, so if you want to, um, if you want a link to the tour, just um, send me a message. You see the ferry coming in. I think that's the last ferry. What time is it, everyone? Is it about half past eight? No, it's past half past eight, isn't it? I think that's the last ferry from Mull coming in there. You can see it's quite a big one. Janet, all ah, right, nine o five. Yeah, could be. Ten past, yeah, I don't know if that's the last ferry from Mull. Probably is. Ten past nine, thanks for that, Julie. Am I descended from Mary Stewart? No. I wish I was descended from Mary Stewart, but unfortunately I'm not. I am a commoner. Mary Stewart changed her spelling. The royal family. Well, the Queen has just died, yeah. The Queen is related to Mary Queen of Scots and boy Prince Charlie through the female line. It's quite unusual. The royal blood of Mary Queen of Scots continues down the female line. And I can't remember which one it was. Ian, can you remember? Is it because of Anne Stewart? It's definitely on the female side. The bloodline continued on the female side, which is quite unusual. But yeah, Mary Queen of Scots, even Prince George, William, they're all related to Mary Queen of Scots. Natalie, I've heard Mary Queen of Scots haunting some castles. Uh, according to like lots of signs and plaques, Mary Queen of Scots stayed in hundreds and thousands of rooms all over Scotland. <laughs> so this we'll just watch this ferry coming in here. Look at this. You can hear the water coming in. I think the tide's coming. Somebody mentioned it earlier, I think the tide is coming in. I can hear the waves splashing up. Cormac, thank you, my friend, for leaving a tip. 
Much appreciated. As I say, I don't normally do tours at night, so I'm going to start doing some more tours once I get back to Edinburgh. I've got a new tour coming up, Murder Houses of Edinburgh. Also, Murder Mystery Tour of Edinburgh. We're going to get a set of clues, and we're going to, you're going to join me wandering the streets of Edinburgh, trying to solve some clues to find out who the murderer was. So watch this space, everyone. Andrew, photos, Paul Stewart. I have got a photo, I can't see that. <laughs> Is there a photograph? Yeah, you'll see lots of photographs of me if you Google my name on Facebook. Uh, on Facebook? On Google. How far is it from the ferry hotel? It's about a 15 minute walk. So that used to be a church there. See that? That used to be a church. It's now a play centre, a play group thing, like a nursery. But it used to be a church. There is actually a cathedral here, believe it or not. I've stayed, can I give you a bit of advice everyone, if you're thinking of coming to Oban, do not stay in this hotel here, it's called the Mutha Alexandra, I'll show you, it's quite a hard word to, for you to understand perhaps, depending on where you come from, but yes, if you do come to Oban, do not stay in this hotel here, it's you behind the counter of the coffee shop, <laughs> yeah, this hotel here is called the Mutha Alexandra. It's so old fashioned. Karen, it's a shithole. <laughs> As Karen says, it's a shithole. <laughs> it's got a swimming pool. But there, can you see the name of it there? M U T H A, it's spelled. I can't even see it. The lights don't even work. See, it's that much of a crap hole. The lights don't even work. <laughs> <coughs> yeah, sky's much further up. Sky's the largest of the Inner Hebrides. <coughs> Mull's quite big. Mull's about an uh, Mull's got about 3,000, does it? Have I just misquoted that? Anyway, look. Ah, yes, Andrew, I remember that. So look, you can't even see. Ah, the light's missing. Look. You can't even afford to replace the lamps. Look, there's somebody jogging past me. Yeah, they never stay there. It's got a dome outside. Look at this. It's got a big snowball dome thing outside it. It must have been thinking back to the COVID situations. Look. Imagine sitting in that with somebody that's got COVID. That would just spread COVID. And the cathedral's not even lit up either. I thought the cathedral would be lit up. There's actually a cathedral here. <laughs> you can't actually see it. Everywhere's cutting back now. On the, because of the electricity has risen by over 200% in Scotland, so everyone must be cutting back on all the lights being on. The Queen's funeral is in London. She will be moved on Tuesday by plane from Edinburgh. Yeah, I'm glad I'm not in Edinburgh, to be fair. I must admit, I've seen Edinburgh on the news today, and I'm really glad I'm not there. <laughs> they closed off all the streets. Half of Edinburgh's closed off. There's police snipers everywhere. Somebody got arrested for booing Prince Charles in Edinburgh. Look, St. Columbus. It's very unusual. I mean, how can a small place like Iona have a cathedral? And a Roman Catholic cathedral like that? Because a cathedral has to have bishops. And it's very unusual for a small place like Oban to have bishops. But you have to bear in mind the location of it. So it did have a bishop attached to it. I'm just going to show you my hotel. This is a Catholic one. Roman Catholic, remember? Because all Protestants are Catholic. All Christians are Catholic. Catholic means universal. Roman Catholic is the church attached to Rome. And of course, Rome is where Bonnie Prince Charlie is buried. Bonnie Prince Charlie is buried next to the first Pope, St. Peter. There's my, um, there's my hotel here, see? Open Bay. Look, Open Bay, this is where I'm staying. Open Bay Hotel. Catholic with a little C, yes, means universal. So all Protestants are Catholic. And if you, tell to, if you say that to a Rangers fan in Scotland, he would not be too happy at being called a Catholic. <laughs> I'm just trying to see if my... Um,
So I see if any of my tour group are in the, in the hotel at the front, sitting having a beer, getting drunk. I've got a bunch of Trump supporters with me. Most of my tour group are from Texas and they all support Donald Trump. And they all go hunting with guns and they've threatened to shoot me already. <laughs> I told them I supported Biden. What do you mean you support Biden? <laughs> in fact, I says Bernie Sanders just to annoy them even more. <laughs> I says, I don't, I don't like Biden. I says, I support Bernie Sanders. <laughs> He's a communist almost. <laughs> go on, Bernie. I just I felt devastated when Bernie lost the, the opportunity to be the president. I think he would have been a fantastic president. Do I have any children? Well, I wouldn't have called my children. He's 21 year old, my kid. I just kicked him out this year. <laughs> I have got, I've got kids, one child, well, I've got two actually. My oldest son is uh, about 30 odds. And my son's uh, Jamie, 21. I just kicked him out of my house this year. I got fed up with him. So I asked him to leave. He was doing my nothing. 21 year old enough. You know, he's old enough to get a flat now. Bernie didn't lose. He was threatened and abused, was he? I don't know too much about American politics, to be fair. I just like to have a laugh and wind up both sides of the, the argument. I actually don't allow it to be discussed on my tours. I am allowed to discuss Scottish politics, but I try and avoid American politics on my tours because it's all Americans, and it can get quite passionate nowadays. Yeah, there is a couple of... Uh, on my tour, there is... But yeah, they are mostly Republicans, but there is a couple of Democrats on the tour. And the funny thing is, right, the tour group I am with, they all know each other. They all know each other, all the tour group, they're all friends. And it's quite funny how some are um, Democrat, well, a couple are Democrat and the rest are Trump's supporters. So it's quite funny, I've got to try and keep the peace between my tour group. <laughs> Yeah, I love politics. I'm a political junkie, to be honest. I love Scottish politics. Um, I've been I've been I've been interested in politics since I was a teenager. Since the Troubles in Northern Ireland, Bobby Sands was more, one of my first political heroes in Northern Ireland. And of course Nelson Mandela as well he was another political hero. Oh, I've just walked some past some guys smoking marijuana there. Mary Jean. I'm a quarter Irish. Yes, my granny was Irish. All my family were Roman Catholic until my dad. My dad was a communist. And he rejected God. My dad, everyone, he rejected God. Can you imagine? Leslie H. Hello, Leslie. Are drugs legal in Scotland? Um, Semi-legal. You can buy almost every drug you want. You won't get arrested for buying marijuana or cocaine or heroin as long as it's only for personal use. You do not get arrested. Hey, Leslie. You've just joined at the end of my tour, my friend. Unfortunately, the tour's just coming to an end. I've just walked along to show you my hotel here in Oban. So anyway, anyway everyone, I do recommend if you come to Scotland... Please come to Oban, it's a beautiful place, a beautiful town, it's much nicer than, I used to live in Fort William, and um, Fort William's okay, but I love Oban. Hey Leslie, yeah, oh what happened there, I had a great view earlier on, it was lovely and light and clear, and then a big storm blew in, I ended up, couldn't see, <laughs> there was no street lights where I started the tour, I just about fell over a hundred times. Then this strange guy started accosting me. I identify as Scottish, despite being born in England. I was born in England, but I moved to Scotland when I was four or five, and I've never considered myself English since that point. So yes, I consider myself Scottish. My accent is very Scottish, as you can probably tell. Hopefully, you can all understand my Scottish accent. Some of the Americans... I have on my tour group just now, the ones from Texas, they are finding it very difficult to understand me. They say to me, Paul, can you just say what you said in English this time? 
And I'm like, that, I am speaking English. <laughs> it doesn't, it might not sound like I am speaking English, but I can assure you, I am speaking English. But yes, I have a very strong Scottish accent, and I'll tell you why. I moved to Scotland at five. I had bright blonde hair with an English accent, and I got sent to a really, really rough school called The Fort. And I had to very quickly turn around my accent to ingratiate myself with the locals because I did suffer from bullying for being English. So yes, I consider myself Scottish. Sometimes I like to annoy my friends and tell them when I'm England or playing Scotland that for football or soccer, I support England. <laughs> but I'm just lying. If I can understand Aussie. <laughs> I'm going to see what my, my coupon's like. By the way, I forgot to show you this earlier on. Look, it's got a chocolate cafe. Look, Oban's got a chocolate cafe. So if you like chocolate, moving to Oban is a good move. <laughs> so I hope you've enjoyed the tour, everyone. If you want to watch the tour again, I'll put a tour up on, um, on my YouTube channel. I'll download this tour and I'll put a link up on YouTube, on Facebook, sorry. So if you want to watch this tour again, if you've missed most of it, just let me know and I'll put a link up for you, everyone. Just a quick reminder, this is a tip-based platform. Thank you so much for all the people who have left a tip so far. It's much appreciated. It gives us, it gives us the confidence to continue bringing you tours from all over. I appreciate tonight was not the best tour. There was not much to see. <laughs> it was a little bit dark. Um, but hey-ho, you know. We can only piss with the pot we have, as they say. One can only pee in the pot that one has. <laughs> so please consider sponsoring me as well. I will always do all my tours on Hago. But what I will do if I do sponsor-only tours, I will do... I try to think I am a comedian. But I'm not, I'm not a comedian by any stretch of the imagination. But I do try and make one to people laugh. So please consider sponsoring me as well. You will not miss one single tour, however. If you don't, because what I will do, eventually I'll put all my tours on YouTube for everyone. So please consider following my channel as well. And I hope you enjoyed this tour tonight. I've got my Marbella hat on. Hopefully I'll be going to Marbella soon to do some tours. Some of you might know I used to live in Marbella twice. I used to work for a cocaine gangster, a cocaine baron. One of my previous jobs was working for a cocaine baron. He used to pay me hundreds and sometimes thousands of euros to be a chauffeur. I only ever worked in a legitimate capacity, however. Please do not think I was a drug dealer. I was not a drug dealer in Marbella. I just worked for one. <laughs> So please, um, do I own a mansion? No, I live in a council house, my friend. <laughs> I ended up homeless in Spain, living in a tent. I'll take from that what you will. So please, thank you so much, everyone. I'm going to put up some tours this week, so watch out for some last-minute tours. I'll put a tour up from Aberdeen, Barata, and Loch Ness. Okay? So please, join my tour. <laughs> yes, Karen. No, he was the top man. He wasn't a dealer. He was like the Baron. He was the guy that done all the importation. At the... He got arrested for 175 kilos of cocaine, actually. So thank you very much, everyone. If you, want, if you haven't checked out Julie, you must support Julie from the Highlands. She's had a very difficult year this year. She's been ill a couple of times. So please support Julie and all the other tour guides on Hey Go as well. So thank you very much, everyone. Thank you for all the tips. And I hope you can join me later on in the week for some more fun-filled, fact-filled tours of Scotland. Watch your YouTube. Um, Purple Paul, I think it is. Is it Purple Paul? Send me a link. Ah, there we go. Choose our Purple Paul 129. There we go. Thank you very much for that. So take care, everybody. I'm going to make a move and try and get some beer. And then I'm going to go to my bed soon. So have a lovely evening, a lovely day. Take care. And I'll see you all soon, everyone. Thank you so much. <laughs>